Hello, I'm the Budget Modder and this is episode 41 of my King Tiger and Berg Panzer diorama build. If you're watching this then please subscribe to my channel, give the video a like, leave a comment and ring my bell. That'd be brill. Thank you. Well, I've done it again. I've lost a part. This time it's the polycaps for the front drive wheel. But have no fear, I sorted it out. I use Bluetech. So without further ado, let's crank up the speedy uppy thing and see how I got it sorted. That's those done. You can see the other drive wheel here. This will also be in a dio. Ah, but what's it going to do? Anyway, whilst you're thinking about that, let's get the drive connectors attached to the lower hull, shall we? And there we have those glued in place. Guess what? Another cock up. I also realised I'd forgotten to do the bloody rear arms as well. Oh good lord, it just gets better and better, doesn't it? So, we better get those done, haven't we? Okay, now we've got those rear arms attached, let's have a look at this drive wheel that I showed you earlier. As you can see, it's a Tiger drive wheel, not a King Tiger drive wheel. This is deliberate. Anyway, the wheels came without the sprockets on it. Thanks John Mayfield for that tidbit of information. So we need to do a little hacking and bashing on this. Namely, removing all the surface detail and then the sprockets around the outside. So, let's get that done, shall we? Yeah, I'm a bit gutted at the moment. The video of what I did to the wheel is corrupted and it's unrecoverable. I spent about three hours trying to recover the bloody thing. So I'm afraid I only have pictures and an explanation of what I did to this part. Anyway, to begin with, I cleaned all the surfaces up, removing the bolt heads. Then I drilled out the holes where the bolts went using my Dremel and a 0.3 PCB drill bit. Removed all the sprockets around the outside, sanded everything down and gave it a quick coat of extra thin glue to try and flatten everything out. As you can see, they still need a little bit of clean up, but I'm happy with how it's looking so far. Next, I prepped all the white parts for a coat of Alclad's Gloss Varnish. With the parts all prepped, I realised I needed to give the breech block a quick coat of gun metal. So I got out our clad's gun metal and gave that a go. I also did the machine guns as well with it. Bugger. Spillage. Thank you. 
Okay, pop that to one side. Now we just need to clean up the metal parts. Rather than spray, I'm just using Life Colors UA231 German Oxide Red. Bit of hairy sticking here. There we go, that's the hairy sticking done. Now to glossing, ready for washing. I'm a poet, I didn't know it. Anyway, I'm using our clad gloss varnish here, best I found so far. And don't forget to use a mask. This stuff kicks up a hell of a cloud. Anyway, let's get this varnishing crack, shall we? That's the glossing done. Now to move on to some deckling. There we go, that's a deckling done on those parts and a few more page corners turned over. Now, for a bit of rectification, then distressing, I need to super glue parts of this mesh back down. Then I'm going to shove a cocktail stick through them. Woohoo! Destroying my work. Fun. Let's crack on. There was something quite satisfying about shoving that cocktail stick through the mesh. Don't know why, but it was. Anywho, no, I'm not ending it yet. There's still another couple of minutes to go yet. But, don't know why, but I kept breaking this part and losing it. You know the one with the ammo pouches on? Don't know why. One of those weird ones. Anyway, I need to get it fixed. Again.
there it is fixed. And now to paint the supports white, so let's get that cracked. There we go, that's painted now. We can pop it to one side to dry. Next for the washing, I'm using my homebrew black wash for this as there would have been heavy black staining from firing the rounds and all the smoke coming out of the breech. So let's crack on and get this done, shall we? There we go, that's them all washed over. I don't like to let it dry anymore as it can be an absolute swine to get off. So I like to remove it while it's still at least a bit damp. But that's how I do it. You make up your own mind on what you want to do and how you want to do it. As I said, I like to remove the wash pretty quickly. But as I was doing that, I had an idea. I've seen loads of people doing wet blending with oil washes acrylic paints all sorts but never on an ink wash not that I can remember anyway so I decided to swamp the area with my home brewer clean thinners and just blend everything in this is what it went like There we go, wet ink blending. We'll see how that turns out in the next episode. Anywho, it seems like a good a place as any to end, so thank you for watching episode 14. If you want to see what happens in episode 42, then please subscribe to my channel, help it grow, like the video, leave a comment and ring my bell. Remember folks, stay safe, 
keep on modeling.